Hi everyone, uh, just working on some uh, wet flies at the moment, uh, you can see I'm dying some uh, snipe and purples, uh, there's partridge in yellow, um, partridge in orange, great old fly style, dying a couple of size, 12 fourteens for the beginning of the season. Uh, I'm actually filling a couple of boxes, but um, the main reason for filming, uh, obviously to show you a flyer, so uh, just to show you how to, to give you an idea, these are, this is a brown partridge feather, it's a great feather. Now when you're tying like a partridge in orange, you basically use the top of the feather and then the bottom section itself, you, you either can just throw away, most people may throw away, and even I, I did, uh, but I don't do it now, I keep a hold of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly tie the partridge in orange, and then using what's left, to tie like a small caddis or a caddis pattern. Now, the basic caddis anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use the traditional salt. Uh, you don't have to do this, uh, but this is peels of salts because I'm tying the traditional uh, soft tackle wet fly. So I'm using that. So the first thing I'm going to do is run the wax through. Now, this is an old spool. This, this spool is probably older than me and I'm 60. So <laughs> it's a good... It's a good age, uh, so uh, it's just I collected these old spools years ago. But you can still get the the silks if you're going to buy like a hot orange uh, and modern silks to buy. I look at is this one, this type here. This is a Japanese silk uh, called it's YLI, uh, and the thread is you see that hash tash one hundred. Uh, basically, this is a yellow one that I use as a primrose yellow. Um, it's 214 that one, I'm not sure what the orange is, but the, if you look up, you should be able to find it. There's 200 metres on this, this spool, it'll last you a long time. And basically, I never throw away these wooden spools, I, I spool them up. But this is a, the real McCoy, this is a traditional uh, piers of salt. Now, obviously wax your thread. Now, I usually start, I get hair length away from the eye. Now, I'm tying on a size 12. Now, uh, we can, for the beginning of the season, size 12 is ideal. Now you could put, with the partridge and orange, you could add a wee bit of dub into it. You can do lots of things to the fly to sort of beef it up. Sometimes I'll do that. But I'm just going to tie the basic one. So I'm just going to come down back up. Just make sure you have your wax there. Now this is the feather. Now what I want to do here is I just leave a wee tiny bit of the fluff at the base. It's a lot of movement in that wee bit of fluff there when you tie it onto your the next fly. Not so much this one, but your next one. So what I'm going to do now is just locate the tip of the feather using my small hackle pliers and then remove, draw back. Now, in a smaller fly, in a 14, I would maybe come a wee bit closer to the point. But for this fly, this size, I'll, I'll just slightly further up. So what I'm going to do is then trim it so that I can tie it on. Enough, leave enough overs to tie it. Now I'm coming down with one, two, three, four turns of thread there. Now in a smaller fly it'd be less, it'd be three or so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate I'm going to, what I need. So I'm going to leave what's on the top here. So I'm just going to draw back these fibres here I need. Just fold them towards the back. And then I'm going to wind, just fold them and wind in one turn in front of the other, but into the the turns of the the silk. Then when I get to the last turn, just follow it with the thread, depending on where it finishes. Just bend it so it's like 90 degrees. And you can do a couple of turns on that side. Then move your hackle pliers, but always keeping the thread tight. And I usually just draw this back. One, I'm actually at the eye at this point. I'm just going to work out, I'll work up about three turns, keeping that thread turn tight. I can pinch off that now. I'm going to show you this. This here is for your, I'm going to be tying a wee caddis fly using that. So this is, you keep a hold of that, it's so right and left. While it's still tight, obviously don't let it go quite finish. Take away any excess wax, trim that away, 
it's open out the fibre. And basically that's your passage in orange. It's going to add a wee bit of varnish. Now before I do that I'm going to actually show you something. Now sometimes I like to heat it up. Uh, just to, when you wind the hackle it catches itself between each turn. Uh, the stem actually catches it slightly. So to bring it out, uh, add a wee bit of heat. So if I you add a wee bit of heat, at the same time what it'll do, the wax and the thread will, will slightly it'll melt and give it a nice shine. So we should watch watch the colour of the thread as well. So what I do is I push the pack of fibres towards the uh, towards the dryer. And you can see the shape, that's the shape of your fly. Now if you watch you'll see it's slightly getting darker. Now that sets, gives it a nice colour. And then what I like to do is just, you don't need a wee drop of uh, varnish, just on to the head. Be careful, you don't, you don't want it on your feathers, or your fibre anyway. There we go. And that, that's enough. So that's your partridge in orange. You see that nice shape. Now this is, I'm going to tie or use up the, the waist piece for this caddis pupa. So what I've got here is quite a heavy hook actually. This one, this is what they call the, the grab gate. It's heavy black nickel. Uh, I've got, you know, you could put a weighted bead on this, I mean in a tungsten or a metal bead. Uh, it could be gold, black, whatever, uh, different colours. This is a glass bead. This is just basically the glass beads you could buy uh, for making small necklaces, I bought them all, <coughs> excuse me, a long time ago. So they're very good for heads, uh, caddis pupa, uh, bit of fun. Now I'm going to use up the waist piece, but I'm going to just use the same. I'm going to use a, I'll show you the fly, sorry, got one line here. Looks a bit rough, but this is a, the pupa here, tied. Uh, I'm just going to use the, the same, the silk. It is a wee bit, it's a heavy thread like, but it's, you can still use it. So, just wax it as we normally do. We start at the top, the way down, it's a nice layer of orange, all the way down. Just going to come round the bend slightly, and then come back up. Again, make sure your silk's there, uh, thread. Uh, is waxed. Now I'm going to add just a wee bit of natural dub. This is a, a basically a rabbit type, the uh, body rabbit from the body. Sorry, a wee bit of UV in it, just to beef up the, the body a wee bit. Just lightly do it. Don't overdo it. Just lightly apply it to the thread. Now I do get asked questions about dubbing, but. What I do is you can see, that the, the, even though there's wax on this, there's not a lot, I can still slide the dubbing up and down. Now, it's basically just sitting on it just now, to until I do a turn, the, what I have now is an anchor point that I can twist the, the dubbing to, tighten it up if I wish. Need to stretch it a wee bit, I can. Just going to build up a wee bit to get a nice, carrot like body shape. The like, give yourself plenty of room. Just stroking back, this fibre out. Fibres, make sure there's there's one here. Just gonna break that. It will all pull together a wee bit once we start. Now, I've got my partridge feather. This is the partridge here. Uh, I lost the one I was actually using. Anyway, this will, I'll just use this one. This is one of the ones I was using to tie earlier. So, could just basically come from the top, tie it in at an angle. Now it's sometimes easier just to moisten it so you can see what you've got there. Uh, you want it towards the back of the hook. It gives impression of the legs and the shock of the actual caddis. So I'm just going to pinch the thread, catch about two or three turns. See how it's sitting. You can always take it off, quite happy with that. 
Now I'm actually going to use the remains as a thorax cover, so just what you do is just fold it back, work way up to where we put the legs in. There we are. Turn this way. Now you can put horns in this fly, I'll put them on at the end. Now for the dubbing, I'm actually just going to use some of the full and mill. This is the Euronym Flash. It's called a brown gold. It's ideal, it's a lovely mix for a caddis pupa. Again, just lightly dub it on. See, I'm just putting it on lightly. Twist it around the thread, it will work. Uh, really, it's already, it's a nice blend, it's been blended well, so it mixes, it goes on really good. Once uh, happy to just work towards the, the bead. I mean, you give yourself some room. We tie in, get some bronze mallard fibres here, so you bring out two. Just bring them 90 degrees out, tear them away. Let's see how they're going to sit. I'm just going to use the thorax to separate them. There's a long fibre here. You don't want them, you want to be able to see them. So, length is just basic to you, what you like. Come around with a couple of turns. Just see how they're going to sit. That's fine. Some wax. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to fold them back with the thread turns. Trim that away. Now bring this over as a thorax cover. Again, a couple of turns. I'm going to show you. See how the horns are like. I'm just going to fold them with my finger. Just all I'm doing is just put my finger on it, sliding it towards the, the bead. It's creasing it down at the base so it, it brings it in. Now that's fine. I'm going to go back to the dubbing, make sure I've got a wee bit of the gold. Don't need much, slightly dub it on. Then I'm going to fold this back and then just put the, the dubbing in front. Just like that, with the thread, just end up there, trim this away. I don't know if you can see that. Just gives it a profile, it's the shape you're looking for. And then Quite simple, just some varnish on your thread and then what finish. Now lock it in. And there we go. So that's just using your the patch hackle. Making sure that you, you get your money's worth out it. Now you'll see here that I've got a lot I keep a hold of these. I think that's the pair I was doing off. I've also been tying the patches, the grey patches. Uh, feather, I've been using that for the patches in yellow, plenty of them, so always keep them, don't throw them away. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and again, thanks for watching.